Hey, nerds. Welcome back to Higarashi when they, them cry. We're back. The game about... About genders. <laughs> there are so many genders happening here. Yeah? <clears throat> do, you, do you think that's the theme of this arc? Do I think that's the theme of this arc? If it's not the theme of this arc, <laughs> then what the fuck else would be? <laughs> I know. Let's spend a full... The first two parts of this chapter ta- making it about gender and then just dropping it like a rock and never speaking of it again. It could happen. I don't believe that. Also, we have our... I, I got the land shark. Yep. Oh, before we begin, you had something you'd been holding on to for a while. Yeah, so... So, in our early episodes of recording... of recording Onikakushi, SK, shortly after we finished recording, said something along the lines of, Oh, you know what? Next chapter, I bet we're gonna get a I, we're gonna get a twin for Rena or something like that. And I had to hold on to it all this time, <laughs> all this time. Was, not laughing, not addressing it, not encouraging it. Because I was like, how do we escalate this mystery? You know, the me who is not me bullshit. I know we give someone a twin. <laughs> and the only thing you were wrong about is that it would be a, a second Rena. <laughs> oh, but geez. instead it's. She own. Mm-hmm. Just wait till we get three own, and then <laughs> I, we, 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 there there could be more. Yeah. The, the, this is my um, unknown me own X theory. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, listen up, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cooking seriously. Your someone's gonna get hurt. For your education as well, so don't fool around. Do it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Teach. <laughs> Would you like? I could. Sh- I will change her voice. I will change her voice. I'm sorry. You don't have to. I am going to. Okay. I just wanted. To, did it once. And now, now we're. Now that she's an actual character, <laughs> I feel bad about it. <laughs> A lazy. Yeah. Wafted through the class in response. After school today, today was going to be home economics class. The plan was for everyone to make curry rice and give it to the forest rangers who let this building be rented out as a school. Yeah. So it is the forest department. Yep. If everyone were making curry in the same pot, it would have been more like a party-like atmosphere, but this was school, after all. Excluding the youngest students, each one of us would be making our own curry. The results being judged. All right, everyone. (laughs) It may be that nowadays curry is an easy (laughs) meal anyone can make, but it has its roots in traditional Indian cuisine. (laughs) What are we laughing for? (laughs) Nothing. What are we laughing for? Why are we laughing? No reason. Why is this funny? (laughs) I gave her an important sounding voice. Yeah. Do we not? Are, are you complaining again? Do I'm I not. To, I'll change it again. You don't have to. Even though we've altered it a bit in the Japanese style, it is still instilled with the knowledge and culture of ancient India. Absolutely do not neglect that fact. I'll have words with anyone who doesn't take this seriously, so be prepared for that. That seemed like a needlessly passionate sermon on curry. Well, whatever. See? She's being passionate. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's rumored that Chie sensei has devoted her life to curry. She'll probably be a pretty strict judge. Uh, as long as you're not failing, your grade in home ec doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter at all. I wouldn't say that if I were you. The teacher is a tyrant when it comes to curry. What the heck does that even mean? A curry tyrant? You saying I can't curry her favor? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. You see, our normally mild-mannered teacher, for some unfathomable reason, is a stickler for curry. Unyieldingly so. Yeah, it's said that every year she goes on a journey to India to research mythical curry. This is just a rumor, but it seems that she eats curry rice three meals a day. And if she occasionally has something else, it always has to be curry flavor. That's that's not unyielding. That's just unnatural. Is she part of an evil cult or something? Besides, doesn't curry top the list when it comes to junk food? Curry three times a day is just weird, nutritionally speaking, and... Uh, I would eat curry three times a day. Ow! <laughs> thunk, thunk, thunk. I would too embedded into the table right by my fingertips. 
a chef's knife, ladle and spatula, helmed gently as they still quivered. The teacher, while still mixing her own pot, was looking this way, smiling. Hey, chan Shh! If you say any more, you'll be sleeping with the fishes. Saying even a little bit more would make my situation a lot more dire. Yeah, yeah, just be serious. Make your curry properly and everything's good, all right? I don't think it's going to be that easy today. Look, Michan is. It's written all over her face. If the playing field is even and we're being judged, there's no way this won't turn into a competition. <laughs> it looks like we're all on the same page. It's a cooking contest. I knew it. There's no way Mion would leave such an enticing event alone. How shall we determine the victor? By how the teacher judges it? As if saying, but wait, there's more. The teacher reappeared with the principal in tow. The purpose of today's event is to show appreciation for the people at the forestry service. So they will be the ones judging the results alongside me. Yep, your teacher and I, as well as five people from the forestry service, will be judging your cooking. Good luck to everyone. Ha 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 ha. Even the principal. Looking around, it seemed like the interests of everyone in the class had been piqued. So that's what's happening. This isn't going to just be some casual curry cook-off. Rena is good at making curry. I'm not going to lose today. My grade is cooking in a group, so I'm together with Rika. Which means that we've got this in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfair. I'm pretty sure Rika is good at cooking. My curry is so tasty, it'll send shivers down your spine. <laughs> <laughs> what about Mion? She doesn't seem like she's too good at cooking. Her type has always been bad at this kind of thing, but Mion continued to look unconcerned. <laughs> I'll tell you what Keichan is thinking right now. Mion is definitely bad at cooking. Am I right? I don't like the way she said that. It couldn't be. Mion couldn't possibly. That moment, the teacher's whistle sounded. All right, everyone. Are you ready? Be very careful with the knives. Start! The call to arms had sounded. We had to use an outdoor kit to cook the rice, but it wasn't that difficult for a camping veteran like me. Put the rice into the canister, push your palm to the bottom, fill it with water just above the wrist. Are you alright with only that much water? If you don't put in more, it could be bad. You filthy liar. If I put in any more, it'll just be left with some half-cooked porridge. Sadako, if that's meant to be a trick, it won't work. I'm used to cooking rice with these utensils. First it starts to bubble, then the steam starts to puff. And don't take off the lid no matter what. Hmm, Keichi-kun, you're amazing. This is a little unexpected. Did you learn this at summer camp? There's nothing unmasculine about knowing how to cook. <laughs> well, my dad really likes to go camping, you see. Whenever summer comes around, our family goes a lot. So this means everybody is good at cooking the rice. In other words, the critical part of this challenge will be the curry. Huh. Curry is Rika's specialty. We'll cream you all. Oh, you lost me at Rika's. Why don't you help with the cooking, too? Hmm, maybe Sadoko-chan is helping the most by doing nothing at all. What? Nah, the ends justify the means. I just have to win, right? <laughs> that was a pretty malicious comment for Rena. And Sadako took it hook, line, and sinker. Rena could only apologize between fits of laughter while Sadako chased her around. Well now, should we move on to the curry? For now, the battle truly begins. After rinsing off the carrots, potatoes, and other standard vegetables, I grasped the knife. <gasps> what will today's curry taste like? As Rena hummed along, her very well-practiced hands wielded her knife. <laughs> what will today's curry taste like? I like the implication that she's done this a lot where she's good at making curry, but also doesn't know what the result will be. <laughs> It's just, it's in God's hands now. <laughs> I just improvise. The rhythmical sound of the knife hitting the cutting board harkened to the kind images of days long past. Simply put, it was perfect. It was so calm in practice, I seriously don't stand a chance. I looked over at Sadako and Rika-chan. Sadako was in charge of washing vegetables, while Rika-chan was in charge of peeling them. That's what I heard being discussed, but Rika-chan's knife skills are something else as well. She was happily rotating the potato and peeling it quite quickly. On top of that, the peels spanned the entire potato. What was that called again? 
Katsuramuki? I've heard that peeling a vegetable in one loop around like that is a highly regarded technique. She picked up the peel from the sink and carved a pair of eyes into it with her knife. It's a snake. Roar! <laughs> ah! Wait, do snakes roar? Saying this that one does. <laughs> saying that she placed the long, longly peeled potato skin on top of the head of a boy from her group. She wasn't even breaking a sweat. When it comes to Rika-chan and cooking, I couldn't even hold a candle to her. But, roar? Do snakes make that sound? All right, then. How's Mion doing? She's definitely just fumbling along, right? There's no way she could peel a potato so effortlessly like that. Are you sure? She's probably helped out at her uncle's at her uncle's restaurant a few times. In the sense that she's probably helped line cook before. <laughs> I would totally believe they had her doing line cook before. She probably, she probably has amazing knife skills because she probably just plays with knives for fun. Oh, she's the one that wants to see a cool knife trick? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no way. This can't be. You've got to be kidding me. This is a trick. She's using special effects. Where's the wire? She's definitely using a wire. <laughs> Here, take a look-see. As if she had already won, Mion proudly showed me the elongated potato skin. You didn't know, Keichi. Mi was taught how to cook by her grandma. Not just cooking, from sewing to flower arrangement to playing the koto, from marksmanship to radio operation, even helicopter piloting is but one of the myriad things she can do. That's... <laughs> Mion, does, is your grandmother awesome? <laughs> Are... <laughs> Are, it, is your grandmother awesome? I think she might be awesome. <laughs> Strangely enough, the latter items were more realistic. <laughs> she just whips out the kodo and plays this like sick shred. <laughs> <laughs> Before ascending to the skies in a helicopter. <laughs> it was the first few items on that list that seemed like a lie. She's actually really good at cooking. It's just such a hassle that she never does it, though. Damn it! I'm also really good at cooking, especially Chinese food. Hey, Chi. Boiling something and pouring it into a bowl doesn't count as cooking. Shot down before I could even say it. Oh, by Chinese food, you mean your cup noodles? Yeah. <laughs> he just means cup ramen. Oh, too bad for you. Today, Keiji Sans will be assuredly languishing in defeat all alone. Clank. Tough words for someone who can't even cook by herself. Ah, Rika! There, there. I'll destroy Keiji for you. <laughs> Ugh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> I'll obliterate him. Ugh, what? It sounds so menacing when you say it. <laughs> oh, this does not look good. Everyone is smirking at me. Don't raise the white flag yet, Keiichi Maibara. Don't throw away this match. Calm down and think. Not about how to peel these potatoes well, but how to win this challenge. Too many people watching. I'm gonna work at another sink. Saying only that, I gathered up all the vegetables and left that spot behind. Well, Keiichi couldn't be alright. I'm worried he might cut himself with his knife. <laughs> Let's see what Keichan's doing. No matter how hard I try peeling these, if I slip up at this speed, I'll lop my fingers right off. And there's only one thing left to do. Hey, Tomito-kun, Okamura-kun. Oh, you guys were in a group of four, huh? <laughs> it's the two underclassmen that have become my sworn brothers ever since the event at the toy store last Sunday. They've been paired with two girls for their group. Yep, both the girls are pretty good at cooking. But both of us can just mess around and we'll be okay. Both of them pointed at the girls. They're not as good as Rena, but they were good enough at handling a knife. I'll get straight to the point. This rate, I'm going to lose this contest. Give me the vegetables your group has peeled already. <laughs> Keiichi, what the hell, man? So, it, we've got... We've got a pattern forming here of Keiichi bullying younger kids in order to take their stuff and framing it as him doing them a favor. Yeah. What? Keiichi, this isn't... Keiji, this is just straight up bullying. What are you doing? But it's funny. It's ha ha good times. No, what? This is this is fucked up. <laughs> Keiji's way of winning is literally just bullying children. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, Keiichi. Wow. Even make sure to pick the same targets. <laughs> My breast on, that's pretty much that. But depending on what's in it for us. In other words, it depends on the terms of negotiation. Ugh, quite bold of you two. That's to be expected. Let's do this. If I win, I'll let you eat the curry that Sadako and rika -chan's group makes. How's that? Uh, uh, I don't know about that. Both of them were hesitant after such a weighty proposal. Just one more little push seems in order. Very well, then let's make an offer they can't refuse. Pulled both of them close by the shoulders and made my offer in a hushed tone. Of course, that includes the part that Sadako and Rika-chan have already eaten some of. I'll even throw in the spoons. <laughs> Splooge! <laughs> that... No, actually, never mind. That no, that's appropriate. <laughs> a red mist sprouted, sprouted, spouted vigorously from the noses of the two underclassmen. Huh? Kiji-san is also pretty good at this. Those are some nice potatoes. Having brilliantly cleared the vegetable peeling challenge, I returned to my comrades and triumphed. Wow, amazing, amazing. So is the whole point of this arc that Keiichi gets someone else to do his stuff for him <laughs> and then passes off the things as his own? What are we meant to take from that? Because clearly that's thematically important, right? So who is... Where are we meant to apply this lesson to? R07 just doesn't teach us these things for no reason. He clearly wants us to recognize and internalize this 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 technique, this little lesson here. But where? We need to be on the lookout for where we apply it. <laughs> hey, Chiklun's peeling is really good. <laughs> Me reading re reading a, a uh, <laughs> fucking Azumanga Dio and being unable to be happy about the school shenanigans. <laughs> just like, oh, come on. Where are we going to apply this lesson that we just got from Osaka, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am fun at parties. Hmm. <laughs> That's not quite right. What Keichan has bared isn't a potato, but his fangs. Yeah, that's right. I'm super serious about this. I will crush you all! Having finished with preparing the vegetables, next is to boil a pot of water and add the vegetables in order of which takes longest to cook. I learned this part from my mother when we went camping. Just cooking in order probably won't garner a lot of points. Look over at Rena. She had a variety of vegetables cooking together in a delicate balance. She wasn't being ambitious or calculating a way to win the game. She was making delicious food with a mother's touch. But feeling I could somehow compete with Neon in terms of technique, but I would be no match for Rena. She was way out of my league. When my mother makes curry, you see, she always uses lots of ingredients. Holy shit, she has a mother! <laughs> Holy shit! Rena's mom is still alive? Wait, that makes sense if my theory about the Hojo still being alive is true. Wait, what? Okay, sorry, so you're, you're still you're still supposing that. Rena is not only trans, but is Satoshi Hojo, and yep. the Ryugus don't exist, and also the Hojos are still alive. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole lot of supposition going <laughs> <laughs> Just so I got all the layers out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, this is the first direct time she's mentioned her mother. Yep. Because in the, in the uh, last arc, uh, she just kind of sidestepped talking about it. So her having a clear and present mother here is very, very different. Huh. This is going to sound like a weird question. Yeah? Has anyone addressed her as Ryugu in this arc yet? No. Okay. What if she's Rena Hojo? <laughs> what if in this arc she's Rena Hojo? Oh, that would... <laughs> yes, the, the hoops I will contort through in order to make trans Rena theory work. Yeah? <laughs> Ooh. Anyway. That's why Rena's curry uses a lot of ingredients as well. Well, she also doesn't live with Sadako. True. Hmm. I really wanted to take all night and stew it nice and slow. <sighs> I beg of you, will you please help just a little with my curry? <laughs> no. This is one of our club activities. Rena won't lose. Ugh, when she enters club mode, even the normally kind Rena becomes an enemy. A renemy. <laughs> Looks like Rika-chan's cooking apples as well. 
Oh, she's like a pro at this. How about me own? Me own you? What the heck is that? Where'd you get that meat from? I predicted what we would be doing today by looking at the schedule, so I prepared accordingly. My curry is going to be marvelous. <laughs> Upon closer inspection, it looks like Mion brought her own vegetables and spices and other ingredients. They were spread all over the place. Mion, just for today, you brought all this stuff from your house? Objection, Chie Sensei. There's no way this is allowed, is it? Objection overruled, young man. As long as it makes for delicious curry, anything goes. Ugh, for that normally serious teacher to go so far as to spend a, spend a star to the end of her sentence. Oh. <gasps> see, Keiji, you can see it as well. <laughs> just as the rumor said, she's a through and through curry freak. Rena and Rika-chan are naturally gifted chefs. I've come with thorough preparations. And Kei-chan, what about you? <laughs> it's hopeless. In the grand scheme of cooking, peeling the vegetables is only a small part of it. The hurdles I must overcome are just too numerous and too high. Maybearasan, over here. Turning around, I saw the voices calling me belonged to the two underclassmen from earlier. Told me to kun and Okamura-kun. What's up, you two? Huh? What's up with that pot? Is that from your group? Switch this with your pot before someone notices. Think that the curry girls from our group made at the very least better than what you could make. <laughs> Guys, for me... No, got the wrong idea. If you don't win, then we... That is, uh... Oh, that's right. If I don't win, the talk of eating Sadako and Rika-chan's curry goes right out the window. Seems like you guys are getting riled up about this, too. Sorry, I'm in your debt, but... I'm surprised the girls in your group agreed to this. Hey, Barisan, we're also serious about this. Filling in on day duty three times. These guys, to assure vi me victory, have paid the price. That gaze filled with burning conviction from my underclassmen. Yeah, I'm not fighting this alone. I'm fighting this with everyone. Leave it to me. Save some room, boys. I'll definitely let you eat your fill. <laughs> we, we shall be, be eagerly, eagerly awaiting, awaiting your, your victory. victory. Thank you, upperclassman bully. <laughs> it's a gas stove, so controlling the heat is easy. All that's left to do is let it stew with it. The delicious smell of curry began wafting upwards. The pot gifted to me by my two underclassmen certainly drew some double takes. Rena even looked surprised when she came to take a look, so it must be pretty good. Okay, Chan, you're pretty good. Looks like this will be a good match right to the bitter end. Rena wants to eat Keichi Kun's curry. Curry. Rena's curry, Mion's curry, too. Everyone is a worthy opponent. I've done my very best, but I'm not sure of the outcome. Keichi san, Rika's calling you. Go see what she wants. While I snick, sneak this pepper into your curry. That's what I'm gonna do while you're gone. <laughs> Just so we're clear. What? Rika-chan's calling me. What could it be? Well, whatever. Well, I'm mad I can gather some intelligence on the enemy. Rika-chan was doodling on the ground in front of the pot. Because all that's left is to let it stew. Even then, it's good to know she doesn't have to leave the stone stove unattended. Hey, Rika-chan, how's yours doing? It's Mr. Curry. Huh? Rika-chan was doodling something strange and introduced it as Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry is amazing. He shoots beams from his eyes. Pew, pew. Apparently, Mr. Curry shoots beams from his eyes. Drawing a beam with a stick, she etched a line toward my feet. Does this mean I've been shot with a laser? Oh, barrier, barrier, beam reflect. I took another stick in my hand and reflected the beam, striking Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry can shoot missiles from his stomach. Pew. Whoa, my power is super electromagnetic barrier. And retaliatory beam. Mr. Curry absorbs the beam energy and fires his impulse wave cannon. Rika and I scratched at the ground, thoroughly engrossed in our doodle war. Wait a moment. Hey, Rika-chan, you called me here for a reason, right? Yes, I called you, but I've already fulfilled my purpose. At that moment, a chill ran up my spine. Already fulfilled her purpose. They got me! I headed back to my pot and standing there just as I feared was Sadako. With no questions asked, I drop kicked the back of her head. No! What do you think you're doing? You know better than to do that to a lady's head. Who cares about that? Sadako, did you mix something in with my curry? How impertinent. I haven't fallen that far. Despite what you think, I am a fair person, you know. Then what is this incomprehensible line of ladles and plates? 
leaving them all in these unstable positions. If they fall over, what will you do? That moment, a gentle breeze blew by, knocking over a ladle that was stood up on its end. The ladle, like a domino, fell over and knocked over the next cooking utensil in a row. Clank, clank. Thud, thud. Ugh, this is art. Come to think of it, domino world record challenges were quite the rage on television a while back. Kate-chan, the frying pan. I didn't even have time to react. The chain reaction knocked over a cutting board, then a frying pan, and next after that was my pot! Crash! The fry pan struck my pot full force, tipping it over! The contents cruelly spilled out, and now my masterpiece was being sampled by the schoolyard. I stared, dumbfounded. Such a beautiful and elaborate mousetrap that for a moment I lost touch with reality. Oh my, oh my, this is a catastrophe! I didn't do anything, do you hear me? <laughs> At the very last moment, I had let my guard down. I ignored the culinar culinarily incompetent Sadako for far too long. Even though she couldn't cook, Sadako still had this method of fighting back. Just then, Rena, who had been sampling her own pot, let out a scream. What? Rena's curry is salty. Salty? Rena was also sabotaged. Then what about Mion? My rice is salty. I've been had. <laughs> With this, all the obstacles in my way have been taken care of before the fight even begins. <laughs> all that effort wasted. So sad. So sad. So very sad. Rika-chan and Sadako rub my dumbfounded head to their heart's content. <laughs> oh, oh, I see why she likes doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing the desk together, it was about time for the meals to be judged. The delicious odor of curry spread throughout the courtyard. Members of the forestry service, to whom we owed gratitude for their daily work, were guided to their seats. The principal gave a bit of a ceremonial introduction. Next, the teacher expressed her desire for them to judge the curry contest. The men from the forestry service seemed like to like that kind of thing and gave their enthusiastic approval. Well, then, is everyone finished? Hmm? We'll now have all the judges sample your cooking. Everybody in the class brought up their painstakingly made curry and arranged them on the desk. The only club members who managed a decent result were Rika-chan's group. Knowing full well it was a failure, Rana plated her curry for the judges. She already knew she was going to get a low score. But at least she was still able to serve hers. Both Mion's and my curry were completely obliterated, so we couldn't even line them up on the table. The judges started from the curry made by the lower grades. They had a lively discussion praising the food. Finally, it was our curry's turn. They do call her Ryugu. They do. They do call her Ryugu. All right. That means the last thing I could possibly hope to is that Ryugu is somehow the family name of Sadako's aunt and uncle. That the last. I, there's a lot of things you could hope. All of this is. Are, are you forgetting that all of this is already predicated on like three levels of other theory about yep. what's going on in yep. this chapter? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, next up is Ryugun's curry. Yeah, this looks quite appetizing. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, that's the principal. Okay. The principal cheerfully shoveled a spoonful of Reynolds' salter, salty curry into his mouth. Of course, his expression immediately changed. Oh my. What happened, Ryugu-san? It seemed so delicious while you were cooking it. Chie-sensei must have had some expectations, judging from her disappointment. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I... Might have added a bag of salt by accident. The rest of the judges grimaced after they each had a bite. I feel sorry for them. <laughs> Failures, but the seasoning for success. I'm looking forward to next time. Do your best. Oh, that's the principal. That the principal said that, okay. not, not Chie Sensei. Failures, but the seasoning for success. I'm looking forward to next time. Do your best. Saying that, the principal devoured the rest of the oversalted curry in one go. Truly a man amongst men. Rena was down and out. Her offensive capabilities were something else, but she was defeated due to her weak defense. Exile. Life imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> Burnt at the stake. <laughs> How could you disappoint me so? <laughs> Chie Sensei, isn't that a little bar? <laughs> Well then, please savor our curry next. I see that Furude-san's group put a lot of effort into their curry. 
Also, we have the same hair color. <laughs> Let's see here. Hmm. It's simple, but very nicely done. There was also the incident with Ren assaulted Curry right before this, so the judge's assessment was extraordinarily high. Maybe not just extraordinarily, but perhaps today's forerunner. The judges had a began a heated debate. One of those judges let out a size he removed a chunk of carrot with his spoon. Uh, this kid's curry really isn't half bad, but I don't like carrots, you see. Personally, I think the carrots are a staple of curry, but I guess to each their own. However, seeing that, Rikachan read the nameplate on the chest of his coveralls and began to speak. That's no good, Kyoji. You have to eat your carrots. What is she saying all of a sudden? Everyone turned to Rikachan with a stunned look. But what Rikachan just did was super effective. The carrot hating judge began stuffing his face with curry while tears streamed down his face. Kyoji, there's seconds if you want them. <laughs> Mommy! <sighs> oh, Rikachan's mom energy. <laughs> While crying like that, he continued to shovel curry into his mouth. That's right. Rikachan's curry was by no means simple. No. That curry had the taste of a mother's cooking. With the carrot-hating judge out of the picture, Rikachan's assessment was unanimous. Oh, no one can stand up to Rika's curry. <laughs> Sadako let off a shrill laugh as she declared victory, but at that moment... Don't be fooled, my esteemed judges. Don't be deceived into thinking that this meager slop is the taste only a mother can provide. What you people actually wanted to eat was this kind of curry, wasn't it? Oh, all of a sudden, in all its perfect glory, me owns curry. Not only the judges, but the teacher and underclassmen in my course myself could only gasp in admiration. Hamburg steak with a demi-glaze sauce and a fresh salad. It's a set. It wouldn't be stretching it to say this was a full course meal. It's perfect, perfectly made. Amazing, amazing. Michan, you're amazing. Michan, you're amazing. Sadako was also shocked. Even Rikachan couldn't hide her surprise. Seems the victor was decided without even needing a taste. Of course, the hamburger was hand needed. The salad also had a homestyle dressing, but of professional quality. And the curry, not even a micron of grit. This is sublime. Truly a taste to savor, Sonozaki san. This curry is no doubt a living testimony to 6,000 years of Indian knowledge and beautiful harmony with Japanese cuisine. I am elated. This deserves full marks. I'm giving it 100 points. Aw, you're welcome. I'm just trying to set an example as class representative. Mion bowed politely and then winked at us with a smirk on her face. I admit defeat. There's no way this is happening. I'm certain I sabotaged that pot of rice. That's right. Sadako had dumped salt into Milan's rice cooker, which should have ruined it. At that moment, it hit me. I spun back toward my own canister. That's why! At some point, my cooking canister had been opened. Its contents completely emptied. Damn you, Mion! You used my rice! That's no fair! Hand over half of your curry. Mion clucked her tongue and waved her finger at me as a smirk washed over her face. Whoa there, Kei-chan. You're not taking this seriously enough. You gave up at the last moment. I didn't. That's the difference between us. As soon as you give up, it's all over. Wow, what a great attitude for someone who might be the sixth conspirator behind <laughs> behind the, 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 the damn site Borman's death. Wow, that's quite an attitude to have for someone who might be involved in a conspiracy. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't even properly voice my shame. Mi-chan, I feel sorry for Keichi-kun. Just give him at least a little. It's fine, it's fine. This is a lesson. Keichan just learned that you shouldn't give up on the contest until it's all over. Right? It loathes me to say it, but Mion is right. To give up so quickly on the match was my own folly. For Mion to have brought that to my attention, I should actually be thankful to her. Well then, did that mean even in this situation I shouldn't give up? Ugh, well my curry was overturned while it was in the pot, and I don't even have any rice left. On the blazes am I not supposed to lose hope in this situation? Me, Barasan. I know! I'll go back to the same well I've been pulling from! <laughs> Bullying younger kids! 
It just works. It just works. Tomi Takun and Okamura kun suddenly appeared. Damn it, even though my protégés had tried so hard, I wasn't able to meet their expectations. It was an accident. There was nothing you could do. Both of them were dejected. I couldn't accept defeat so easily. I was their senior. What, should, what would I be if I didn't pick up the broken pieces of the dream I had shown them? Just learned it from Mion just now, didn't I? Don't throw away the contest. Not until the last moment. Think, Keiichi Maibara, think! Not about how to make more curry, about how to win the match. Oh! I had an idea. I didn't think it could turn the tables, but it was better than nothing. Dummy Takun. Oh, Dummy Takun, come wash your hands and help me out. Okamura Kun, there's something I want you to find. Okay, okay gotcha. gotcha. Both of them dispersed after receiving these instructions. Oh, how is Keichan going to flounder about at the end? Why don't you show me? Nobody likes a stubborn fool, you know. Shut up. Just sit there and watch the last card I have to play. For yourself, Miona will be taking some of your rice, thank you. I won't let you say no. No, I don't really care. It's salty after all. It, it's okay if Rena helps too, right? Keichi Kun is in trouble right now. Hearing you say that is very reassuring. Well then, Rena, go make some tea. Oh, he doesn't trust me. Next, Sadako. Also, Rika-chan. I challenge you to a side bet. What'd you say? We'll listen to your request. This was my duty to my two protégés, who shed blood, sweat, and tears for my sake. Sadako and Rika-chan, if I receive a perfect score, I'll be taking your curry. Nothing for you to eat. You need to know when to stop joking around. I'll be giving a big no to that. No, it's all right, Sadako. Take him up on it. Firmly patting the top of Sadako's head, Mion said those words with all the gravitas of a club president. You handicapped him this much, didn't you? There's no way he can make up for that, so meet him head on. No matter how hard he struggles, he's not going to make a comeback, right? Ah, uh, that may be true, but... I don't mind. Keichi, go for it. Yay! I love Rika's energy so much. Aww, she's the best. <laughs> The judges, seemingly growing tired of sampling the various curries, were debating each entry. From what little I overheard, it was seemed that Mion's impending victory was not in question. By the way, what happened to my Barakun's curry? I still haven't tried it yet. Oh yeah, the pot with my curry in it fell over. Hmm, is that so? That's a real shame. I may have lost my curry, but it doesn't mean I've lost this contest after all. I'll have everyone singing my praises. My competitive posturing had drawn the attention of all the judges. First of all, just be quiet and eat these, please. I'll listen to your complaints after that. This is my cooking! My Barakun, that's... That's... Ah, huh. uh, Onagiri, huh? The judges smiled wryly at the simple fare that was quite in contrast to the preceding bravado. Rena poured tea into the cup she had brought over from the break room. He's... He's making a mockery of things! There! Look, that's not even any filling! It's nothing more than salted onigiri! This isn't even worthy of being called a contest anymore! It's true, the amount of salt might be a little much, but... Renan's expression told me that she thought this was a great idea, but it might still not be enough to win the match. My Barasan, is this really enough to make a comeback? Gentlemen, you did well! It's alright. Just watch. The judges were chewing with their mouths full and sipping at the tea. Nobody was singing praises or awestruck. They were just quietly chowing down. It seems that Kei-chan has learned how to use some rather underhanded tricks. This might be difficult. Yeah, that's right. Rena understands that now, too. What do you mean? Why is everyone just quietly eating that much? You see, Sadako-chan, this because the judges are actually tired of eating curry. Because <laughs> they were judges, they had to sample each and every offering. Because they were from small children, because they were made to show their appreciation, they couldn't just eat a little bit of each. Sometimes a man values the amount more than the taste. At those times, rather than rich, mind-blowing flavor, they crave simplicity. They couldn't say it out loud, but this was the tastiest thing they'd had today. I confirmed that by looking at their eyes as the judges smiled wryly. 
Oh, praise your efforts, but today's contest was about curry. I'm not sure we can give a score to this. The teacher and principal had folded their arms while they pondered the situation. My underling, seeing that, saw the small glimmer of hope fade away and grew dejected. Was a little surprised, just not enough. Don't give up, Kei-chan. Mion whispered quietly. That's right, if I didn't push here... No, I'll have you give it a score. If you think the curry and onigiri are really that different, you're sorely mistaken. Oh, my Barakun, what are you saying? How are they the same? The principal stopped at the teacher. Looked like he was giving me one final chance. The judges having eaten their fill quietly waited for my statement. <clears throat> In its homeland of India, curry is usually eaten with a type of bread called naan, is it not? Therefore, you could say that this cuisine we call curry rice is something that we have adopted and modified. Just as the teacher said at the beginning, it's a fusion of Indian and Japanese cuisine. I know what you're trying to say, my Barakun. But what does that have to do with onigiri? It's actually quite very simple. Both curry and onigiri are things made to let you enjoy eating rice. Rice was introduced to, to Japan from ancient China. Our agricultural forebears watered the fields, fighting the elements, disease, and pests to grow and raise our rice-centric culture. Yes, the Japanese people have formulated a plethora of dishes, but those were nothing more than attempts to find ways to enjoy eating rice. In other words, curry and onigiri are both the results of rice culture! It was scattered at first, but slowly grew into a steady roar. It was a thunderous applause that praised me. Enough with the nonsense already. I won't accept this. The teacher's only judging curry, you know. This is out of the question. It obviously deserves zero points. Miss, Keiichi Kun did his best. Could you please acknowledge that? Today's class was supposed to be about curry. What should we do? Mion, stifling her laughter, stepped forward. There's a story about how when a Michelin three-star chef from France came to Japan. The people from the hotel he was staying at had a whole bunch of ingredients imported from France, but the chef didn't even give them a second glance. I wonder why that was. They were ingredients from his homeland. The chef went to the local fish market and made a dish from fresh fish caught in Japan. The culture of food isn't bound by predetermined rules. It's culture. If you come to Japan, you meld with Japanese culture and make something new. That's how curry and onigiri are the same. Neon, who's providing fire support. I had to be grateful. The judges were somehow moved by this complicated yet baseless trivia. <laughs> <laughs> A stern look washed over the teacher as she refolded her arms. My Barakun, your part of curry was flipped over, was it not? Even though I said at the beginning to be careful. I'm... I'm sorry. But as my Barakun and Sonozaki said, there are no boundaries in cuisine. If it is something that can amaze people, then it is not something that should be discriminated against just because of the form. Then? For spilling your part, mine is 20 points. But just for today, for not giving up and doing your best, plus 20 points. I will give you the full 100 points. My Marasan, we, we did, did it. it! My underclassmen leapt at me. A perfect score! We did it, we did it! The curry was split and our rice was taken, but we made a comeback. In the end, Rika-chan's curry also received full marks, so everyone but Rena had a perfect score. Since this contest was outside the scope of regular club activities, there wasn't any particular penalty game. Rena breathed, breathed a sigh of relief. Now then, as promised, Sadako, Rika-chan will be taking your curry. <laughs> that means we won't have any lunch! <laughs> Sadako stomped angrily at the ground in frustration, but the price of the defeat was absolute. Is what I wanted to say, but I will show you some mercy. You can eat half. Thank you, Keiichi. My two protégés peered over from the sidelines, tears of joy streaming from their faces. We exchanged glances that would only be understood amongst men. We did it, my Marasan. Ah, this is all thanks to you. We flashed each other a thumbs up. <laughs> Just like it. <laughs> yeah, that's the code amongst men, right? <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up! Now I just have to give these to my pupils. I've gotten pretty hungry myself. I guess I'll have one of my own nigiri. Wait, huh? There's no trace of my own nigiri. The ones I set aside for myself included. As I peered around searching for them, the principal clapped a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> when I was listening, listening to that speech you gave, the rice I was chewing grew even more delicious. <laughs> Could it be that you also ate my share? <laughs> the principal simply laughed without answering. Seriously? 
My eyes half burning with tears and my stomach rumbling. I was called over by the teacher. My Barakun, because of the circumstances, I had to give you a perfect score, but... You understand, do you not? Understand what? There was an odd glint in the teacher's eyes. If I had to describe it, it was curry-colored. Like a pot of stewing curry, her eyes whirled around in a spiral. A chill washed over me. The teacher clutched me by the shoulders and drew me in closer until our noses were almost touching. Curry is this world's most respected and sacred of dishes. I will absolutely not allow it to be put on the same category as onigiri. Do you hear me? Curry was created in an ancient India, one of the four great river valley civilizations. It was raved about during the reign of King Ashoka in Kap Kapila Vastu for the birth of the Shakya. At the International Flood Expo, Michelin Twirly Twirly, even the Eiffel Tower was picked in the simmering curry turmeric. Whether you are asleep or awake, curry, 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 curry. You hear that sound effect? Yep. <laughs> hey, uh, Keiichi san? What are you stumbling around for? Cleaning up is a part of cooking, too. Keiichi kun, your eyes are all curried. Why is that? Why? Curry, curry, curry. <laughs> Yikes, she got him, huh? It's okay, he'll be back to normal by tomorrow. Probably. Wasn't all that long before hunger brought me back to my senses. <laughs> Curry. Yeah, I want to eat curry. How badly do you want curry? I don't know. Yeah, I do think the big takeaway there is Mion's um, philosophy about not about you know if you're in it, you're in it to win it. Like not giving up before the final final moment, and about always putting in your best, your your most effort. She's a toxic boss. <laughs> Is that what if toxic working, bosses say? If you're not working as hard as I am at my job, then you don't deserve to be here. Is that what she said? I don't think that's <laughs> what she said. <laughs> I don't uh, think that's what she said at all. What she was saying, that, she's making a point, though, about like how I'm putting in 100% effort and you're not. I'm, sh I'm ashamed that you haven't put in, that you have, that you stopped fighting before the very end. Yeah, the whole thing's about don't give up fighting until the very end. That's not a thing a toxic boss tells you. <laughs> this is like a sports coach speech, not yeah, a toxic yeah, boss speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I see the parallels to like the I'm taking this seriously, and if you're not taking it as seriously as I am, then you're disrespecting me and my effort. I don't know. I don't think I was entirely baseless. Hmm. In the end, all the onigiri was eaten by the principal, so I had to make do without lunch. Actually, I need a uh, thing to wet my throat so I can do more Sadako voice. You want to hold the mic for like two seconds? I'm holding it. What should I do with it while I hold it? I don't know. Vape. Vape. I was going to say vamp, but vape instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back with water. I brought some for Vivian, too, because I'm nice. Thank you. You're welcome. In the end, all the onigiri was eaten by the principal, so I had to make do without lunch. Skipping lunch. I never knew the afternoon could be so long and painful. A feeling other than drowsiness made me space out. Are you alright, Keiichi kun That's why I said you shouldn't eat Rena's curry. As if I could eat this curry with enough salt in it to make my blood pressure rise just by looking at it, is what I said as I initially refused. I could only regret it. The hunger, the stomach ache. Well, well, you did a good job making it through. Your absolutely hopeless situation, that is. Wow, rude. Keichan, you're pretty strong when you're cornered, eh? Ugh, I don't need any compliments right now. I need food. There is something for you to eat at home, right? We don't just keep snacks lying around at home. I'm out of cup noodles. Ha 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 ha. Since you're enduring that hunger so much right now, I'm th sure tonight's dinner will be really tasty. I had absolutely no intention of laughing along, even though I had my land shark here with me. <laughs> well then, I'll take my leave. I have my part-time job again today. Which one? You know, my part-time job, helping my uncle. Which part-time job helping which uncle? <sighs> it's really rough when you're not used to the work. <laughs> That job at Angel Mort Family Restaurant, huh? Yeah! Mm-hmm. Nope, nope, nope. You're, you're, again, we're misunderstanding this on purpose, Keiichi. Mm. 
that uniform was somewhat stimulating. Oh. Being a waitress really is hard work, huh? Eh, me Chan is working as a waitress. I've been here the whole time. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, because they're walking home together. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? What kind of place is it? Ah. Uh, no, I'm... Right, I'm working at that toy store from the other day. Xion is the waitress. Oh, my bad. I completely forgot about how that... How it ended up being. I'm sorry, you guys look so similar. I mixed you up. Keichi-kun, who's Xion? Rena asked the obvious question. Uh, Mion's younger twin sister? She's got a different personality, but she's a dead ringer for Mion. That's right. We, we look similar, but our personalities are completely different. I'm very kind and thoughtful, but Xion has a cold and scary personality. I think that when you guys were born, Xion got all the feminine aspects, huh? Unlike Mion, she's a cute, cheerful girl. Kei-chan! Rena interjected as her eyes darted back and forth from our exchange. Hmm? Is that true? Rena's never met her. Mi-chan, did you ever tell me you had a younger sister? Xion's existence was already being exposed as a cover-up. I couldn't even help Mion out here. I could only have her end this charade. Oh, yeah, I still haven't introduced her to you, Rena. Uh, my uh, my uh, younger sister's name is uh, Xion. I don't know. I never heard of... Oh. I don't know. I've never heard of her. I never met her when I went to Michan's house. Um, yeah, that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm the only one that lives with Grant. Xion lives at the family home in Okonomiya. We're not that close, so yeah, she doesn't come here too often. <laughs> You're working really hard to sell this, and I'm not buying it. <laughs> hmm. Renna's face indicated she wasn't sure if she was convinced. She was usually a bit of an airhead, but she was unusually sharp when it came to these kinds of things. My lies detector has been activated. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's not a lie. Please believe me. As she said, yeah, I believe you, a smile suddenly blossomed on Rena's face. Rena wants to meet her. I'll go and see her sometime. What store is she working at? What store? Um, uh, that is... Oh, she's getting more tangled in her little <laughs> web of lies. I could tell that Mion was getting increasingly frantic. I wanted to help her out, but it was hard for an outsider to butt in on family issues. It's like there's a reason they don't, like... There, there's got to be a reason there that they're not around one another anymore or much at all like they don't seem to be angry at one another but there's definitely a reason <laughs> for this and a reason that's making me uncomfortable continually addressing it because i don't i don't know what the reason is but it's not just that it's a web of lies i doubt that uh uh sorry i have to get to work later uh rena keichan see you tomorrow unilaterally ending the conversation Mion headed home no matter how you looked at it, she was running away. We'll just label this one as an emergency escape. Michan was kind of cute. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> Rena giggled in amusement. Oh, I wonder when dinner is. Would lying down be the best way to conserve energy? I sprawled in the entryway without even taking off my shoes. As I was losing the last vestiges of my consciousness, the doorbell rang. It seemed I had a guest. Come on in, it's open. I directed my listless voice at the door. Good afternoon, huh? Kei-chan, what are you doing? See, my guest was Mion, or rather, Shion. She seemed shocked when she saw me sprawled out in the entryway. Is that Shion? Wait, why? What? I thought Shion's existence was an illusion that was limited to when Mion was at the restaurant. If I never even considered that Shion would appear here. I heard from my sister. Because of club activities today, you weren't able to eat lunch, right? There's was a lot of trouble. Sadako spilled my pot, and you stole my rice. But, but I'm... 
Chiang. She began to grow red and mope. That's right, she was in the younger twin right now. Sorry, sorry. What's up? Did you bring something for me to eat? Oh my, it's somehow disappointing that you hit the nail right on the head, but here. With a disappointed smile, Xion held out the small bento box she had hidden behind her back. Oh, you really brought something to eat? Well, thank you. There was still some of the ground beef left over from what my sister brought to school. I knew it was going to be right before dinner, but I wondered if you'd want it. Am I bothering you? Not even a bit. I'm really happy. Uh, can I really eat this? Sneaking a look inside the box, to say that she just put some of the leftovers inside would have been a lie. It was an elegant meal stuffed inside. Is it really alright? It's not like a ton of hot sauce mixed in or anything, is there? No hot sauce, no needles. Jeez, I'm not my sister. I wouldn't do that kind of thing. If you don't like it, you don't have to force yourself. I'll just go home and eat it myself. Saying that, she pouted cutely and made a motion as if to snatch the box back. There were some times that made me doubt she was the same person as me, and this was undoubtedly one of those moments. I don't mind at all. I want to chow down on it with thanks from the bottom of my heart. It's not something to be so thankful about that your nose has to run. Shion, who had thought I might not take the bento, looked down happily. It's not much, but uh, do you want to come in? I could probably make some tea or something. Ah, uh, sorry, maybe some other time. I'm on my way to work. Well, that's right. She did say that before. Just rinse the box out with water and give it back to my sister tomorrow, please. Of course. It would only be the proper thing to do after being allowed to eat something that looks this delicious. Well then, I'll take my leave. She dresses so professionally and prim, too. <laughs> Again, we should reiterate, she is how old at most right now? Like 16 or 17? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, one last thing. She grew red again as she looked down once more. During that contest with the curry, my sister took your rice without permission, right? My sister fools around too much, so sometimes she gets carried away. She wasn't doing it just to be mean. Hey, hey, it's not like I mind that much. There are no grudges when it comes to club activities, after all. In fact, I should be the one that's thankful for all the thrills and entertainment. Could you tell, <laughs> could you tell that to Mion for me? <laughs> yes. I think my sister will be very happy to hear that. Well then, I have to go. The one thing that makes it harder to believe that they are actually twins is that, like, how does she know about that already? <laughs> right? That that that's that's the one stickling thing that would be like, oh yeah, it, it would make more, it would be easier to believe that they were the same person. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that they both don't live together allegedly, and but still don't talk. talk to each other. It Mion says they're not close, and it's been it's been some time since they've seen each other, and yet. Shion appears to intimately know the details of everything that happened at school. Yeah. <laughs> and everything about Keichi. That's kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Because she says Mion talks to her about him a lot, which is... Doesn't yeah. line up with what Mion says. Mion says they're not close at all. Yeah, because Mion's got her own reason. No, I, 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 I firmly believe that Mion has her own reasons for not wanting to get deeper into what their relationship is. I don't think she's lying out of malice. I think she's, there's, there's some deeper truth. There's some deeper, there is some deeper, um, intricacy to their relationship that we as the audience don't know about yet. And that's, what's causing me on some level of pause here. Mm. Kind of like, like similar to what I was saying at the, at, like what my theory eventually was for the end of chapter one, like the way they're acting is predicated on, they're them having a different understanding of things that they're not sharing, and then Keiichi assuming it must be this way. Remember, all anyone has told Keiichi is that there are two of them. He's the one who's created this idea for himself that there is only one person. This is entirely Keiichi <laughs> doing this. No one else has substantiated this. He just came up with it on his own and ran with it as fact. So... And we all know how well that turned out for him in chapter one, don't we? <laughs> so, no, no again, I, 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 am, I am fully willing to believe that there, is some, that there is some unknown details to their relationship that explains why they're acting this way around one another, but would also make Mion kind of want to be evasive and avoid it. Mm. Shion smiled brightly. After bowing deeply, she left as she looked at her watch. I'm happy, but is this really okay? I looked at the bento box she left behind. 
A faint warmth spread through the palm of my hand. If it were me on, I could see the hot sauce, mustard, and maybe even a needle being mixed in there. A needle, huh? But really, I don't think she would go so far as putting a needle in there. Yeah! Yeah, that'd be weird. It would be weird for anyone to do that. It's like that didn't happen. I opened the box once again and hesitantly tasted a bit. I took a bite and then another. There was no funny business. There was no danger at all. For it was delicious. That's right. That was she owned, not me owned, so there shouldn't have been anything to worry about. Hmm. I rushed back to my room, eating as I gave my thanks. It was so delicious that my stomach could cry. She owned, no, me owned. When she heard I was so hungry I could die, she brought this over to me. It was delicious to the last bite. By the way, nothing strange had been mixed in. I was a bit embarrassed at myself for being so skeptical. Wow, short chapter. Yeah? Yeah, that one was really short. Holy shit. But yeah, I, I, I'm I still... Given Keiichi's track record of things that he insists are the case, but only come up like from his own... That are only derived from his own speculation. I, I'm, I'm very skeptical. It was delicious. You, smile? Huh? Smile? Huh? <laughs> uh, hey, Mion, here you go. Uh, what is it, Kei-chan? I thrust the bento box she'd given me yesterday at her face. Bento box you gave me yesterday. Thank you. It was delicious. Uh... Uh, Mion's face quickly blushed bright red. Hey, now, you were the one pretending to be Shion when you gave it to me. You're not going to give it away if you get all red like that when you're being Mion. Oh, you're going to give it away. This rate, she might trip and fall right into her own grave, so I decided to help her out. Listen, I was pretty hungry yesterday. Out of the blue, Shion came all the way to my house and gave me some food in a bento box. This is that box. Made sure to wash it clean. Ah, uh, <laughs> right. Shion's really considerate, huh? That was so transparent. Was Mion always this terrible at lying? Her expression was different than usual, but it looked strangely cute. So, what did you think? You two are like peas in a pod. You're twins, right? Obviously you look the same. Uh, not not that, uh... Mion looked be kind of bewildered, like she was trying, waiting for a specific answer. When she said impression, maybe she didn't mean Shion, but the bento? Of course, it was delicious. Uh, uh, really? I never lie about liking food. If I say something is good, then it's objectively good. You can feel free to give my recommendations to every single person you meet. Tell Shion it was seriously great, alright? Uh, okay. Tell Shion, right? I will. I think she'll be happy. <laughs> We're going along with Shion having given it to me, not Mion, aren't we? And yet her laugh, it came from deep down, and it sounded really happy. I guess she really can laugh nicely about that, just looking at her. Really nicely enough that lo just looking at her makes her meet... I'm gonna try this one again. Yeah? I guess she really can laugh nicely enough that just looking at her makes me feel better too. A sarcastic remark made its way onto my tongue, but I swallowed it back. As Mion went to put the bento box in her bag, she noticed a clattering noise. Okay, Sean, there's something inside. Huh? Wow. Oh, she opened it. Thing is, I was a little embarrassing, so I wish she hadn't opened it here. Panicking, I hit it with my hands. Well, this is why my mother told me to put them as thanks. I didn't come up with it or anything. Don't get the wrong idea. It's so pretty. Candy. There were a handful of candies neatly wrapped in paper inside the sparkly clean bento box. When I was cleaning the box out yesterday in the sink, Mom came over and interrogated me, and I fessed up as to who had given me the food. Then she told me that something like this called for a display of gratitude. I didn't want it because it was embarrassing, so I argued that it wouldn't be like me to do that. That's what happened. I mean, ugh. I was so embarrassed it felt like fire might shoot out my face. Mion laughing the whole thing off like she usually did would be fine, but for some reason she was staring at the candy in the box with fascination. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank my mom. She put him in there. Besides, you're not the one I need to be thanking, right, Mion? Those are for Shion, okay? Uh, right. You're right. Okay. I'll be sure to tell Shion. I just know she'll be happy. Mion, looking a little downtrodden, put the lid back on the box. It seemed like I ended up saying something a little mean at the end. Mi-chan, you look sort of cozy today. Did something happen? Did it? Perhaps she's caught a fever. The red in her face is probably due to the increased body temperature. Hey, Mika, why are you petting my head? Sadoko, I'm sure you'll be able to catch fevers soon enough. Pet, pet. <laughs> ah. 
Oh yeah. So what was that all about? <laughs> Again, I I there is some there is some detail about their relationship that we don't know. <laughs> I I I refuse to just accept that it what is would you rather I just accept what's put before me? Is that what you're looking for here? <laughs> Is that what you want me to do? Is it really so bold of me to assume that we haven't seen the whole context in, of a relationship between two people in an RO7 work? <laughs> are, are you really calling me silly for that? Might have explained this before, but phys ed at our school is really just an exercise in disorder. After some random warm-ups, the rest of the time is spent doing whatever. Or to cause a ruckus or just fall asleep. I'm not really sure, but doesn't the Board of Education have some sort of curriculum for this? Something like, when you're this old, you should have this amount of physical ability? I have no idea what you're saying, Gage san It's rather difficult to understand. Well, you see, it's something like a rule for teachers to follow during class. Haha, <laughs> maybe you weakling city folk need something like that. But do you really think us country-raised kids would lag behind in physical ability? We are better athletes than you would think, Keiichi. Kind of think of it, they just might be right. If we all lined up for a race, there was a good chance I'd finish dead last if I didn't start off well. Let's just pray that when a brutal penalty game is at stake, the 100-meter dash isn't a club activity. <laughs> I could defeat you in single combat. I believe you. I watch too much television, so I am fantastically tired. I'll be using this time to catch up on my sleep. It's fourth period, and I am completely starved. If I don't sleep now, then when will I ever? As I began to sprawl out on top of the pipe, Mion grabbed me by the collar. I can't- I, I've gotta remember Just, how to do it. There we go. Yes. I did it right. For years I've been reading it as tisk tisk tisk. You could here's the thing. Also the word tisk is also an acceptable form of that now because it's like that's the word that expresses that sound. And yet Do you really think I'd let you sleep in peace and quiet? With that look on your face it require more courage to try to take a nap than not. Good grief, which means it's not gonna start again. Now, just killing time with idle chit chat until the bell rings is impossible for us hot blooded youth, isn't it? Shall we start a club activity? When is our club going to actually meet as a club after school and not during school hours? <laughs> Just as I thought, it's come to this. What is today's game? Now that this is happening, taking a nap is impossible. Not just that, with this sleep-deprived head of mine, I'm as good as mincemeat. To get my brain into gear. Rana thinks that we should decide what today's penalty game should be before we start. <laughs> Rena knows what's up. I've prepared something super special today. She began to announce the cruel penalty game with Grand spinning flourish, but before she could do that... I'm sorry, I have something that I wanted to do. Of all people, it was Rika-chan announcing her non-participation. Even rare events do eventually occur. Losing her timing, Mion spun like a top as she tumbled to the ground. What? Huh? What's the matter? Are you not feeling well? Oh, that's right. Michan, she has to practice for the Watanagashi. That's right! It's this Sunday, after all. Rika's in the middle of super serious training arc right now. I've been working too hard lately, so my arms hurt. And I have to sit under a waterfall several hours per day to <laughs> practice my spiritual focus. <laughs> Ooh, is, she, is she like Maya now? <laughs> Uh, I see. Well, there's nothing that can be done. Because she's got to swing the, uh, the 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 implement around, right? Yeah, yeah. got to swing the ceremonial tools and do the ceremonial dance. Yeah, 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 I get it. As one does. Because, wait, she still has to do that even though she lives at a home with her family? She's still the shrine maid? Wouldn't her folks do that? I mean, she wouldn't she be a shrine maiden regardless she if her dad be, oh, was yeah. running the running the temple? Yeah, okay, okay. Maybe it's a ceremony that needs to be specifically a shrine maiden. Maybe. I got the impression the whole reason she was forced to do it was because that her family wasn't there in chapter one, but could be, could be uh, otherwise. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. There's no point in doing anything if we can't get everybody together. 
Today, let's just take it easy. I'm very sorry, but I'll try my best. Yeah, good luck. We'll be cheering you on. When Mion announced that today's club activity was cancelled, Rika-chan and Sadako headed off behind the school building. Only I was left alone, completely clueless as to what everyone was talking about. Sadako helped her practice, as we all as we know from the last one. What was all that about? Is Rika-chan training for a competition or something? Rika-chan is the shrine maiden for the Watanagashi, so she has to perform a ritual dance. It's practice for that. Why don't you explain things in order? First of all, what is this Watanagashi? Next, what do you mean by shrine maiden? Last, what do you mean by ritual dance? Huh? Didn't you get the notice at your house, Kei-chan? Wasn't it written there? The Watanagashi Festival is this Sunday. A notice at his house? Okay. Huh? When I think of it, I have a feeling Mom did say something about it during dinner the other day. The Watanagashi is a festival that happens at the shrine on a Sunday every June. It's very lively. I see. But Watanagashi sounds pretty strange to name for it, huh? Something like uh, the Lantern Festival, where they have a memorial for the dead by floating things down the river? Oh, I figured you might guess right, Kei-chan. The Watanagashi, or Cotton Drift Festival, is, as the name implies, where we set cotton adrift down the river. The cotton you see is from futons or jackets. Jackets is new. Last year, it last chapter it was specifically futons. I don't think that's suspicious, but it's interesting. So it'd be something like a futon memorial. They also pile futons up on the altar. I've heard of people leaving offerings like of things like needles or kitchen knives to their ancestors or to casualties of war, but an offering of futons is just a is a first for me. What's the history behind that? Wait, hold on. How did Xion know where Keichan lived? <laughs> Sorry, that just occurred to me. That just occurred to me. How did this old man knows everything? Is Xion like weirdly invested in what's going on in the lives of these five? What if? Like really uncomfortably invested. She could be stalking all of them even now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Mion tilted her head pensively. I don't think there's a complicated backstory to it. The winters around here are pretty harsh, so things like warm futons and coats to ward off the cold are pretty important, I guess. I see. In other words, it's something like giving thanks to the futons that took care of you during the winter then. See, that's a different explanation than the one we got for the Watanagashi chapter one. The explanation there was that, like, it was to beat the disease and, um, li like, to, to give thanks to the futons who had given their best, but mm -hmm. specifically to ward off disease and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if that's important, because it's still, it's still the kind of thing where, like, it's different, but it's, like, same enough that it probably doesn't mean anything, but... Yeah, and those could both be true at the same time. It could just be we're getting a different explanation in a different circumstance, so yes. different aspects are highlighted. Exactly, exactly. And that's important, because who, like... I, I talked about this a lot during our discussion of episode one, but the way different people describe the same events is very interesting. Mm hmm Because it, it tells you a lot about what they think is important. That's what the Watanagashi is, huh? Oh, right. In other words, it's something like giving thanks to the futons that took care of you during the winter. Then the Shrine Maiden holds a memorial service for them and sets them adrift. That's what the Watanagashi is? Mion and Rena indicated I had the correct answer with a round of applause. And you see. Oh, and you see. And you see. The, that Shrine Maiden performing the memorial is Rika-chan. Oh? So Rika-chan is a Shrine Maiden. Now that you mentioned it, Rika-chan does have a mystical air about her. Right? Right? Rika-chan in a Shrine Maiden outfit. Ha <laughs> ha. So cute. It certainly does seem like it would suit her. Yeah, it might be cute. I finally get what you're saying. Rika-chan's training is for her performance as the Shrine Maiden, then. That would be it. The Shrine Maiden has to purify a number of futons as part of the ceremony. It's practice for that. It's a lot of hard work. The Shrine Maiden has to carry a large ceremonial hoe as part of the rite. And it's really heavy for Rika-chan. Well, Rika-chan is pretty small. Exactly how heavy is the hoe? It's pretty heavy, enough that Rika-chan has been practicing with a mochi mallet. That's exactly what Sadako said she was practicing with uh, last arc, so... 
Glad to see her training regimen's at least the same. Wait a minute, that's way too heavy! Forget about Rika chan, that'd be rough even for me! It's a sacred ceremonial hoe. If she dropped it by accident, it'd be big trouble. Well, it's a once a year kind of deal, I guess. All we can do is cheer from the sidelines. Oh, wait, no, this is probably right. Well, that. it's a once a year kind of deal. All we can do is cheer from the sidelines. It'll be okay. She pulled it off last year. Oh, really? Then the least I can do is cheer her on. Even something like that little would help her, right? I was rather curious about how exactly she practiced. Mion laughed as she shook her head. Leave her alone. If you go, Rika-chan will get all cute and won't be able to practice. Huh? I didn't quite understand what Mion was saying, but... You see, Rika-chan doesn't like showing people how hard she works. That checks out. Okay? So just leave her be. If you show up, she'll just be all meep and nipa and won't accomplish shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that checks out. Even the always cool and aloof Rika-chan has times when she sweats while giving it her all. <laughs> Because she was always so well put together, she didn't want people to see an ungainly side of her. It's not like I couldn't understand that feeling. We've got to try desperately to make sure she stays off camera so she can be productive. As <laughs> soon as she is within the viewpoint of this visual novel, it all falls apart. Good. Meep. <laughs> Meep. <laughs> all I can do is pray for her success, huh? Well, do your best, Rika Furude. I'm cheering for you. Well, then... Climbed up onto the pipe and plopped down on my side. Hooray, hooray, Rika-chan! In order to transmit more of my psychic waves of encouragement, I'll be entering a meditative state now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to sleep after all? Ow! Oh. <laughs> the lackadaisical noontime ended up giving up way... <laughs> Ugh, the lackadaisical noontime ended up giving way to mind-numbing afternoon classes. Rebounding from yesterday's hunger, I ate too much for lunch today, leaving me alone in a horrible condition. Ugh, I might have gorged myself a bit too much. I'll have to endure afternoon classes. Haha, <laughs> Keiichi-kun, you had an amazing appetite today. Basically, you always eat like a pig, but today was on a whole different level. Yesterday I skipped lunch, right? The hunger just soaked right in. This time, no matter how much I ate, my hunger knew no bounds. Haha. <laughs> I get you, I get you. I get you, I get you. But really, Keichan, you always finish your lunch down to the last bite. Heck, even down to the last grain of rice. Oh, with food, you show appreciation for the person who made it by eating it, you know. If you leave any behind, it's rude to the person who put in all that effort. Hearing that, Mion's eyes momentarily widened in surprise, followed by a cool laugh. Keichan, really? At first glance, you seem unruly and irresponsible, but you're actually pretty conscientious. Well-disciplined or something like that. Ah, yeah. Rena thinks so, too. Thinks so, too. Keichi-kun is a lot kinder than he looks. Both of them were probably trying to compliment me, but I had a strange feeling I wasn't being complimented at all. <laughs> That's not true. I just wanted to say there's a big gap between your appearance and your personality. Ouch. And I'm saying that's not a compliment! Hey there! Sonozaki-san, my Barakun, we are in the middle of class. How far did you get, Sonozaki-san? Bring your notes up here. Startled, Mion vocalized a rather easy to understand utterance. She was so Fuck. enthralled. <laughs> she was so enthralled with the conversation, she had stopped working completely. Um, uh, doing all right. You haven't progressed at all. You are in the highest grade, so you must shape up. That, Mion. That, Mion. It looks like she's getting lectured. Poor bastard. <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving, in other words. Just screen cap this right here. <laughs> Just frame this one still image. <laughs> Rena smiling. Appearances can be deceiving, Keiichi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, appearance might be the opposite of reality. Wow! Okay, never mind. We found a better one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say some interesting things sometimes, you know. Responding to Rena's seemingly profound statement, I... Yeah! No! <laughs> no shit! I turned my gaze to where Sadako was happily studying together with Rika-chan. You saying that Sadako... That Brett Sadako is actually really meek? If I went by what Rena literally said, then that would be the case. I can hardly imagine Sadako being meek and gentle like a girl in some fairy tale. 
Saroko-chan's been rude lately, but just a while ago she was pretty different. She acted really spoiled and always... Yup. <laughs> Keep this a secret from Saroko-chan, okay? That Sada collecting so cute? For Sadako to play coy, I think that would have to be some sort of calculated plot. Even if she was to hide behind someone, I wouldn't think it was because she was attached to them. But since it came up, I tried to imagine a gentle and coquettish Sadako. Hey, uh, Sadako? Oh, what is it, Onisama? <laughs> Sadako smiled cutely and walked toward me. By the way, for every three steps forward Sadako took, for some reason I took three steps away. Oh? What are you, Sama? Why are you running away? I'm sorry, Sadako. For you to approach me with an affectionate smile on your face, I just have to think it's some sort of trap. Oh, but that's so mean. Onisama, you're meanie. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be so mean to you. The weeping Sadako came closer to me. I am a sucker for tears. Click. Clink. Huh? A bear trap? My leg was being clamped down on by jagged metal teeth. <laughs> you fell for it. Now for the next part. Sadako raised her right arm triumphantly and traps began to trigger one after another. Ah, your leg. It's called it a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> Running from your life from Sadako Hojo. <laughs> Brandishing a knife, it's Sonico Hojo. <laughs> <laughs> I this works better than it should, okay? It does. <laughs> Suddenly the wall sprang forward, throwing me three blocks away. And there I saw a giant metal ball covered in spikes hurtling toward me. On top of that, in the direction of the wall would knock me was a giant guillotine. I'm <laughs> I'm not really sure, but K Chikun. You're th not thinking of anything completely ludicrous right now, are you? Oh, no, not really. Not at all. That's a lie. You've <laughs> got the kind of look on your face that says, I'm going to be crushed by a giant spiked metal ball. How can my expression convey that when, when I was thinking like that? Sorry, imagining a meek and gentle Sadako is impossible right now. I'll try again when I'm in better shape. Next, I looked over at Rika-chan, who was working diligently on some kanji drills. In contrast to Sadako, her default state was meek and gentle. Rika-chan came at me saying, Oh, Nisama, I'd hug her. Tightly. I could get used to that. Hey, Chikun, you're drooling. Oh, sorry, sorry. And now about Rika-chan, are you saying that her appearance is deceiving as well? Saying that out loud, I felt a tinge of doubt. Was Rika-chan really all sweet? Despite her appearance, was she really... She was really quite sly, sweetly... How do you put it? Evading things deftly. I get the feeling that Rika-chan isn't always just sweet. Her appearance is definitely deceiving. I couldn't exactly put oh. exactly what I was imagining into words, but... Oh, Rena said that. I'm sorry. Oh, well. No, go for it. Go for it. I get the feeling that Rika-chan isn't only just sweet. Her appearance is definitely deceiving. I couldn't put exactly what I was imagining into words, but Rena managed to say what I wanted to. She turned to me with an impish look in her eyes, like she was saying, Uh, you shouldn't say something like that. When Rika-chan grows up, I'm sure she'll become an incredibly devilish beauty with men wrapped all around her little finger. Do you think that would be cool? <laughs> oh. When Rika-chan grows up, I'm sure she'll become an incredibly devilish beauty with men wrapped all around her little finger. Don't you think that would be cool? Or hear me out, we turn her into a cat girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll go over well. I've got the market research. <laughs> Rena said that lightheartedly, but I, as a man, couldn't laugh at that. The scary part about that was it felt like it could be true. Noticing my gaze, Rika-chan turned towards me and let loose with an angelic smile. Both Rena and I, feeling as if that was directed towards us personally, had our hearts skip a beat. Ah, so cute. So cute. Rena, your nose is bleeding. Appearances can be deceiving, huh? Well, then what about our dear leader, Mion? I stared at her as she tried to weasel her way out of her scolding by the teacher. By Rena's theory, that unrefined, calculating, conniving Mion also had a side of her that belied appearances. Then what you're seeing is that Mion, despite her appearance, is actually a good person? Michan is a good person. Oh, well, that is true, but what I'm trying to say is... 
Yup, yup, I know what you're trying to say, Keichi-kun. Catching on that I was struggling to express my feelings as words, Mana smiled even more brightly. Know what? Michan is mysterious, right? She's a girl, but it's like she's a guy. That's right. Mion was more than aware that she was a girl, but it was exactly as Rena said. When Mion livened up the mood, it wasn't as though she felt like a guy or a girl specifically, but a friend of the same gender. Man. Remember at the beginning of this episode, you were like, are you sure this is the gender chapter? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you, are you, you take me for a fool? <laughs> Do you take me for some kind of fool, madam? If she were a guy, we'd probably be like two peas in a pod. Two pigs in a blanket. <laughs> the, the, that's the same way it is right now. <laughs> but you see, even that Michan is actually really feminine. Rena, how much did Mion pay you exactly? That's not true. Jeez, I'm trying to have a serious conversation, you know? You know? Just kind of like doing a cold read on it. It seems like... Maybe she had to learn a lot of those skills because in some way she was being groomed to be a particular, like, she's being groomed for a particularly feminine position. Like, mm. either she's being groomed to be married off by the family or, like, to assume, like, that the head of that, the head of the family at some point. Mm. And so she needs a lot of, she has been groomed and grown with a lot of these traditionally feminine skills, but also has the the space and leeway to express a lot of the more traditionally masculine things that she would be interested in. Mm -hmm. Such as piloting helicopters, <laughs> I guess. Marksmanship. Marksmanship. Hey, we do know there's at least one sharpshooter in Hinamizawa, so yeah. it's not that far-fetched. <laughs> uh, and she carries a gun around with her at all times. <laughs> You're like, why are, we, why are we even... Yeah. So... I, I, I'm willing to see that there's that tension there where she has all these very traditionally feminine skills and abilities, but doesn't like to use them because it doesn't feel true to her. But I could also see some like, like someone like Neon understanding the value in knowing those things still mm -hmm. and having them as tools in her toolkit, even if it's not something that she likes to use to express who she is. Mm -hmm. If that makes does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's a good read. Uh, you know, first shot at that anyway. Rena began to pout. Now probably wasn't the right time to joke around. Mi-chan is the club president, so she's trying hard to lead everybody. But she's really a very cute girl. I really don't want you to forget that, Kei-chi-kun. Rena's gaze focused off into the distance beyond where Mion was. The Mion I had met at Angel Mort was unimaginably different compared to the Mion that I normally knew. Flustered and hesitant from the unfamiliar job, it was a far cry from the brash and confident Mion. Even though she had to hurry to work, she went through all the trouble of bringing me food when I was on the brink of starvation. And she did so not as Mion, but as Shion. What exactly was Shion to Mion? What kind of person was Mion exactly? Keiichi Kun probably couldn't even begin to imagine. Begin to imagine. <laughs> As if to say it was our little secret, Rena held her finger up to her lips as she giggled. Mion, finally free from the teacher's preaching, returned to her seat, cradling her head to hide her embarrassment. Hmm. This old man, you see, thinks that grade school is enough for everything you need to study for in life. Saying that, she plopped down onto her seat violently. Mion was actually really feminine. Right. What if I could meet Shion again? I wanted to talk to her again. Clang, clang. The principal waved around the bell that served as the school chime. The teacher rushed back to the blackboard and began to list everyone's homework assignments. Whoa, it looks like there's going to be a lot of homework today. Gotta buckle down. Well then, time to bear down for finals. <laughs> that means even Rena? Huh? What do you mean? Appearances can be deceiving. Would that apply to you too? Huh? <laughs> Keichi-kun, how do you see me? How? Ow. The Rena Ryugu that I knew sometimes took things too far, but was generally a kind and gentle ideal girl. Really? Really? Then that m makes me happy, I guess. If she was the opposite of what she seemed, that would make her... And if you really were, were really the opposite? Hmm. Just try saying it. I won't be mad. That's what I felt she, was, she meant. Rena is, uh... Uh-huh. Rena is... Even if you were the opposite, you'd still be Rena, right? 
This question shouldn't have been so nerve-wracking to answer. Maybe it was because the person in question was staring at me, but even saying that took a strange amount of effort. That's no fair, Kate Shikun. It bothers me when you say it that way. Ah. Perhaps unable to endure my silence, Rena's face began to burn red with embarrassment. Rena, Kate Sean, let's go home. Mion walked over and started getting ready to go home. Whenever school is over, she really does get noticeably more energetic. It was the same relaxing walk home as always. Digging around my pocket on a whim, I noticed something that should have been there was missing. <gasps> my first seal keychain! <laughs> What's the matter, Kei-chan? The key to my house I always carry around is gone. Where did I lose it? It's fine today since my parents are home, but ugh, this is still bad. That sure is troublesome. Did you forget it somewhere, or did you drop it? Which one was it? Did I take it with me this morning in the first place? What? Kei-chan, did that key have anything that would make it stand out? Yeah, it's on a keychain. It was a blue fur seal, something I made for summer homework a long time ago. Huh? Does it have its eyes shut like it's taking a nap? Oh, how did you know? Yeah, that's it. Mion looked away and began to whistle. Um, see, you went for a dinner at Angel Mort a couple days ago, right? That night, the staff found a key, and there was a fur seal keychain attached to it. As she said that, she suddenly grew flustered and added that Shion had told her about it. So I dropped it then. <laughs> but aren't you glad they found it? I'm sure they're looking after it for you. That's right. Why don't you go? Xion looks the same as me, so you'll know her by sight. This was a rather unexpected development. Once again, I had no choice but to go and meet with Xion. I also had to thank her for the bento from yesterday. Besides, taking some time and chatting with the other side of Mion might be interesting. Half jokingly, I began to think about things like this. All right, Angel Mort, was it? I'll head over to Xion's restaurant to get my key back. While I'm at it, I'm having a nice spot of tea might not be a bad idea. Ha ha ha. Mion's just trying to drive the customer base for Angel Mort up. <laughs> hey, we got you a new mark. <laughs> totally, like, finds out that Keiichi went there and may or may not be interested in going back, steals his key, hides right? it there. Right? I was like, I'm pretty... I don't know that he actually dropped it then or Mion might have stolen it, but <laughs> either way, either way, Mion doing the hustle to get... <laughs> that or consider... What if the key wasn't dropped at Angel Mort, but was indeed found at Angel Mort? That's even weirder. Because <laughs> I was like, could she ought to have taken it from him when she came to Bento? There are so many little things here. <laughs> you sound like an English gentleman. That totally doesn't suit you, Kei-chan. Is this the restaurant? The one that Michan's little sister is working at. Yeah, why don't we go together, Rena? Sorry to disappoint you, but I have plans with my father today. She has a father, too! She has a family! This is so weird, right? Like, it's very purposeful that these de- I have to imagine that these small details that wouldn't seem out of place if you weren't paying attention to the last chapter closely are purposely being thrown here with just kind of casually aside to catch attention. Perhaps so. Like, the, 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 the uh, what do you mean perhaps so? R07 is definitely doing this on purpose. But what does it mean? <laughs> Some other time. Rena seemed pretty disappointed about having to miss such a great opportunity to see cute waitresses. Exactly. You said they're twins, but do they really look that much alike? Enough to mistake which is which? Yeah, they're totally the same, at least on the outside. Unlike Mion, she's well-mannered and really cute, though. In response to my teasing, Mion pouted and began to argue with me. I couldn't help but burst out laughing at Mion's little farce. After all, they weren't just identical, they were the same person. After going home, I changed my clothes and dug up my bike out of the garage. Just thinking I'd be able to meet Shion again gave me a mysterious feeling. <laughs> you say garage? I, sometimes. <laughs> Have you? Has this always been a thing? No, I switch depending on what I Where'd feel like. you pick that up? Huh? What do you mean where'd I pick it up? Yeah. I just, I can say words how I want to. You can. I'm just curious because isn't that like very much a Britishism? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely it is. I just think it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> there was this period of my life where I was spelling with uh, using British spellings. But that was, that made sense for reasons. Yeah, that, that there was a reason for it. It made sense at the time. Um, but like, it, it was a skill that I, I had, I, not a skill, but like, 
I learned it and then I unlearned it as, as circumstances changed. And it's like, <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, I'm going to claim it's a leftover from that. Okay. She owned a name for a different kind of Mion. She was a mysterious and ridiculous person believing she had everyone fooled like that. And you know what? I think we'll save this for next time. We'll Alrighty. have to see what happens at Keiichi's Vigil Angel Mort next time. I'm, next time? This is so strange, but I'm liking it. Yeah? Yeah, I'm really enjoying where this is going so Is it much. what you thought you'd get for a chapter two? Not at all. <laughs> and I'm still worried I'm like, but but I also feel like the fact that I'm noticing a lot of small details that seem very important means that my close reading of the first chapter wasn't for nothing. Mm-hmm. Like I still feel like I, I still feel like I'm getting a lot more out of this than I would have otherwise. I'm glad. So we'll see you all next time, folks. Peace. Smash that like, comment and subscribe. Hey, welcome to the very special, super secret Umaneko spoilery discussion at the end of this video, but you didn't think that was coming, huh? Oh no, I haven't been spoiled on it. What's the spoiler discussion will, about? We'll, so you've got like a few seconds to click off to the next video on the playlist here or to switch over if you don't want Umaneko spoiled for you. You got that? Great. So after we finished the previous episode and were introduced to Shion, I started and had kind of gotten like our our feet wet in this in this second chapter dry them off i started thinking about what the f what the framing device for this for higurashi is one of the things about umaneko that's really important is that is figuring out what the the framing device is mm -hmm. right and the framing device is stories written about a group of people who died under unknown circumstances and who therefore who exist like pieces on a game board uh, and whose lives and stories can be molded in different ways as long as they don't as long as they don't concretely um, break with the established facts of the order of the matter. And so far, uh, when we had gotten through episode two, my thought was like, oh, it seems like things have changed as far back as the original dam incident if it's even happened at all. But who would who would? want to tell these different stories about these about these same group of kids in different scenarios over and over and then we were introduced immediately to a character who was outside looking in hmm. Shion the important thing about Umaneko is learning that like, like the stories are being told for the like or being read and studied from the benefit of someone who is not president but present in, on the island but very much is Fascinating, fascinated, and captivated by what happened there. Angie, the the young mem youngest member of the Ushiromiya family who was not present that day. In Shion, we have someone who might fulfill a similar role here. Someone who has demonstrated a lot of interest in the lives of this group of five kids, but is mostly appears to be on the outside. She's not part of that central group, and though she has like, <laughs> it looks like in this telling, she's getting a little bit of contact with them. I don't think there is a place for her in that group for reasons related to her and Mion's relationship that we don't fully understand. So, like, if I wanted to take an early stab at, like, what these, what the framing device here would look like, I guess it would, it would be something along the lines of maybe these are different things that Shion has written in the future about, about the summer between about one summer between this group of friends that her and that Mion told her about. And that might also make sense if Mion was indeed one of the final conspirators of for the dam incident and was one of the ones slated to die, perhaps? Hmm. I don't know. That one that one's a bit of a stretch, but if Mion is no longer in her life for some reason, that might be an explanation for why she's still thinking about it. I don't know. It's it's pretty it's a pretty wide swing, but I, I think the 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 question of who for whose benefit are we reading these stories, right? Who is it that would be fascinated with revisiting these events from different angles? 
I think that is important to consider. Here's another thing to consider while we're on the topic of Umineko. Sure. So we know the shenanigans that Ryukishio 7 gets up to with multiple people and the number of people and... Oh, absolutely. uh, Yep. Do you think that's in play now? Here's the thing. Um, Again, knowing, knowing what we do about how about how Umineko works. It's clear that as um, as far as um, RO7's writing style, that different personas of the same person are effectively different characters. Mm. So, um... Eh, I don't know that we have a reason to invoke that just yet, but... It's it's something that's been that's been roiling in the back of my mind as I'm considering the Shion Mion mm-hmm. dichotomy here. Like I am considering it, but I don't. Again, like even learning she existed, I don't know that that her existence changes anything about Chapter One. Um, but but I can't help but you know make the comparison about the relationship between Shannon and Cannon, mm-hmm. the same person who looked very different in in different personas, right? Or was portrayed very differently in different personas. Um. I can't help but notice that this feels like a different version of that, where it's trying to invoke, <laughs> it's trying to invoke it backwards. It almost makes you think that, like, if I had known about that particular argument going into sh- to uh, Umineko, I would have been more surprised by how Shannon and Cannon was handled because it's breaking the implied rule of they have to look exactly the same, <laughs> right? <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. yeah so I that is present in my mind, and I am considering it. I'm not bringing it up in the body of the episode because, like, I don't want to. Yep. You know, I'm trying to be courteous to people who haven't played Umineko, but know that I am aware of it, and it is factoring into how I'm thinking about the the relationship between Mion and Shion, and Threeon. <laughs> At Threeon. At three, there's it's gonna happen. Trust me. 